previous videos, we looked at the importance of knowing human rights to tackle hate speech. A human rights-based action should contribute to realizing individual and collective freedoms and rights. That is, it should support the emancipation of people in fighting for their human rights. There are three main principles to follow when you design an action based on human rights. Firstly, it should include no hate, no violence and no discrimination. Secondly, it fosters equality, respect and solidarity among individuals and social groups. Thirdly, it promotes an understanding of the equal dignity of all human beings as well as critical thinking, fair dialogue and correct information. But what does a human rights approach mean in practice? Here are a few questions you may ask yourself when designing an action. Does it humanize? Humanizing targets of hate speech is essential. One consequence of hate is a dehumanization of the targeted individual or group. In other words, this is when targets are considered as less than human. For example, it means that you should show targets in their full dignity or undertaking actions, unlike in advertisements that show black people or women as objects or victims. Does it promote solidarity? Solidarity means showing your support and helping the targets of hate speech. That can take the form of solidarity marches in the street, to changing your profile photo on social networks, or signing petitions. Those who experience hate speech are usually in silence and isolated, which may lead to depression and suicide. Showing them solidarity and empathy is a fundamental value that you may want to ensure in your action. Does it promote participation? Participation is one of the fundamental principles of democracy. Active, free, non-exclusionary and genuine participation is also a universal right. For example, if your action is involving refugees, make sure that they have access to information in a form and language which can be understood by them. Does it encourage intercultural dialogue? Intercultural dialogue, as defined by the Council of Europe, stands for dialogue between cultures, enabling us to live together peacefully and constructively in a multicultural world and to develop a sense of community and belonging. For example, if people from diverse cultures are co-designing and represented in your action, it will enrich the content of your action and bring the prejudices that some cultures are superior to other cultures. Does it promote values of non-discrimination and equality? Non-discrimination and equality means that all forms of discrimination must be prohibited, prevented and eliminated. In other words, you cannot find discrimination with discrimination. For example, you are planning to organize a meeting or workshop to tackle the discrimination of LGBTQI plus people, but you do not allow the participation of the Muslim community, especially of women who wear the veil, the burqa, the hijab or the niqab. Be careful, because while you are tackling the issue of discrimination of one group, at the same time, you might be discriminating the other group. Does it encourage learning about human rights? It is important to refer to existing relevant national and international human rights instruments. Hate speech constitutes a violation of human rights and it is regulated by law in most countries. Your messages will be strengthened if they refer to agreed standards and commitments and will foster knowledge about human rights. All of this ensures that your action does not only tackle hate speech, but does so in accordance with human rights principles. <laughs>